This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to a YouTube video. Today we're gonna to be diving into some photos that I've taken over the past couple months. I think a lot of us, myself included, tend to really only share our very best work on the internet, you know, and rightfully so. I think in a lot of ways, it's the kind of work that gets you hired. It's the kind of work that you, you know, want to showcase yourself as an artist. And, you know, overall, we don't really like to share mediocre or, you know, just random day-to-day -day photos as much as, you know, maybe someone who doesn't do photography for a living might do. And I have a problem with this because I really love just random photos of my life and my travels and the people I get to surround myself with. I take tons and tons of photos outside of, you know, even what I do for a living or whether I'm out on location, shooting portraits or shooting some landscape photography. I think for me, taking photos for fun and taking photos, you know, without really any idea or process to share these images is really enjoyable for me and I like to do it a lot. I like to go take photos without any sort of strings attached. You know, I can keep them for myself, I can share them with family and friends, but I want to start a new series on this YouTube channel where I kind of dive into some photos that I've taken recently. I want to walk you guys through a little bit my thought process behind each of these photos, a little bit of the story behind each photo, and overall I just want to kind of share some more work on this YouTube channel, you know, share some work that hasn't really been seen. If you guys want to check out, I have a if you guys want to check out my secondary Instagram account, that's where I post a lot of this kind of work. I will link it down below. Um, but really overall, these are just a lot of just random kind of life photos mixed in with some more landscape photos, some portraits, you know, really anything else that I can get my hands on and stuff that I capture on a daily basis. I'm excited to share that with you guys. So without further ado, let's hop into our first image here and walk you guys through how it was taken and the story behind it all. All right, so the first image here is one of my favorites, actually, that I'm going to be showing you guys today. It's a photo taken at Diablo Lake in Washington. My dad and I actually took a trip out there pretty recently over Thanksgiving. Uh, just took like, a really beautiful scenic drive through the mountains, and this ended up being my favorite image from the day. I've taken this photo, honestly, numerous times on numerous occasions, but really never with these great conditions that we had that day. Uh, the mountains were snow-capped, it was really foggy and misty, classic Pacific Northwest weather, and I just was a really big fan of the colors, honestly. I shot this on my Mamiya 7 with some Kodak Porsche 400, and overall, I really just love the composition, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it has a really nice mix of dark, rich greens that Washington is known for, and some subtle blue hues in there as well, and I love the clouds here on the horizon on top of the mountain. So overall, I really love this image, and I think it came together pretty nicely. Okay, so next here we have a photo that was taken just a couple of days prior to this actually, also in Washington. And this is one of my favorite images from the trip as well. Um, again, Allegra and I took a trip up to see my parents for Thanksgiving, which was great. It was nice to see my family and we got out and took quite a bit of photos, which was really fun. I was able to snap this picture early in the morning in Olympic National Park. And the nice thing about Washington is you get these really amazing kind of light rays in the morning because of how misty the air is. So you get the sun shining through the mist and it creates these really amazing rays, especially when you have trees to work with as well. It's just really nice light all around. And obviously I couldn't resist. We were driving on this random forest road and I saw this, I had to pull over and we spent about an hour there actually shooting some video as well. Um, but I snapped a couple pictures of this beautiful light coming through the trees and the colors are great. The light is really, really amazing. And as you can see here too, kind of the right of the frame right here. This is really what I'm talking about where you can see how pronounced these rays of light are. Um, and yeah, again, I really love how this image came together. So shot on a Mamiya 7 with uh, Kodak Portrait 400. So next here is again from that trip to Washington. Uh, I was able to snap this picture just on the side of the road. I loved the kind of feeling that you get when you look at this. You have the kind of road right here, but you also have this lake literally on the side of the road and it's reflecting really nicely. As you can see right here, there's these trees that are reflecting perfectly and the water is almost this kind of green color that looks really interesting because I think it's so similar to the color of the trees. That's really kind of what I noticed. And I love using natural framing like this where you have the trees right here and it really kind of draws the viewer in to the actual reflection of the lake. Um, but yeah, this is a cool spot as well. So here I have a portrait actually that I took not too long ago of my friend Julia. Uh, we ended up meeting up in Malibu to take some portraits and we actually didn't really have that much light to work with. I'm hopefully gonna be posting a set from this pretty soon over my Instagram, but I was just 
kind of wrapping up editing these photos and I figured I'd throw one of these photos into the mix to talk about. Uh, we had this vintage Range Rover that we were able to shoot in thanks to my friend Dylan. And it has these really cool plaid leather seats. And I know it's not a huge part of this particular image, but the overall feel of this uh, car and you know, up in Malibu in the mountains was a really great opportunity to take some portraits. And I shot this on my Contact 645 uh, with I think Portrait 800 if I remember right. And I just love how the colors turned out. This is scanned by State Film. So if you guys wanna check out State, they scan all of my film and I can't recommend them enough. I'll drop a link down below. Uh, but I just love the colors that State is able to grab out of these scans. Uh, I really love the natural feel to these images and they just do a great job. I think, you know, the highlights here are really balanced and soft at the same time. We shot this, I wanna say it was like five or 10 minutes before actual sunset. And as you can see, there's some really nice soft light hitting the right side of her face, but the left side is actually much more uh, dark and there's a lot more shadows going on. And this is kind of how I like to work. Um, I try to find as even light as possible, but I do love like the kind of natural contrast uh, that is in this image right here. Even the colors and, you know, kind of the, the brightness uh, of the, the colors on the windows right here, I love because it really kind of draws you in as the viewer to the portrait. And I really like how this turned out. Next we have a photo. I was actually on a walk uh, to grab some coffee with one of my friends, Haven. He has uh, a Leica M6. So I decided to take kind of a cropped shot of him. I really like the shirt that he was wearing. And we passed by this really interesting kind of pastel colored garage. I thought his pants looked really nice as well. And overall, this is much more of a color and symmetry thing than anything else. That's a lot uh, of what I photograph on a daily basis is really interesting color palettes and really nice patches of light. So here we have another photo that was actually, I think, taken in my neighborhood a couple weeks ago. I was on a walk and I loved the windows. I don't know what I loved about them, but I loved the combination of the windows with the nice green foliage here. And I think what I like the most, honestly, is there's these really subtle reflections that are really interesting to me. And I thought that the leading lines of the actual window were pretty interesting as well. Uh, a lot of East Los Angeles has these really interesting window panes and I just thought it looked really nice. Here we have a pretty similar photo to the one that I just talked about. What I loved about this though, and I wish I would have kind of composed this a little bit better, is I was trying to frame the light here right in the kind of big panel right here. And I think that would have been a little bit more interesting and more symmetrical, but that's kind of what I was going for here. I could have honestly shot it a bit more cropped as well. I was really only focused on kind of this area right here. Um, the rest of the frame isn't really that interesting. There's kind of like an umbrella down here and telephone wires. So again, if I would have cropped it more like this, I think that probably would have looked the best. Um, but other than that, I actually really like the kind of feel and, and I love the materials that were used on this house. And that's, I think, a big reason of why I wanted to take a photo of this is I love the, the light, the colors, the symmetry of the window panes and the reflections, and also that really subtle kind of frame within a frame, uh, that lamp in the background. Here's another photo I think from actually like a couple houses down from the photo I just showed you. And I just thought the windows were interesting with kind of the color palette right here. We got some really nice soft grays and blues, but we also have some interesting like plants down here that have a nice kind of light, uh, almost brown texture to them, kind of tan gold-ish. And I think it looks really nice. So I think something that's important to note about these photos is that, you know, really I love taking photos like this just to kind of have a color palette to, to keep in mind for future shoots. You know, I, I love the combination of these uh, plants down here with the blue and the subtle kind of gray, almost a green tint to it on the windows here. And I could potentially use that for a shoot down the road in terms of, you know, maybe someone is wearing clothing with a color palette like this. Um, I like taking photos like this because I can look back and understand, oh, these colors look really nice together. And I can kind of keep that in my mind uh, for future shoots down the road. Next year is just a random photo of a flower. Uh, nothing, nothing too, nothing too crazy. Um, I really liked how the colors looked. I think I shot this at 1.2, so completely wide open on my Nikon F3, and love this, love the swirly bokeh in the background. 1.2 obviously is very, very shallow. You're getting crazy depth of field. Some of these flowers aren't even in focus, uh, but that's kind of the look I wanted to go for for this particular shot, and I think it turned out nice. It's a nice uh, contrast with the colors of the flower and the colors of the background. Here's a photo I think I took uh, on an underpass uh, somewhere in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I love how the lines 
are kind of intersecting with each other. And the really nice part about living in Los Angeles is how great sunset light is. And I think this was on its way towards being sunset. Maybe it was kind of early afternoon-ish, but I loved the harsh shadows and so I took a photo of it. Here's a photo just of my bar cart at home. <laughs> um, pretty self-explanatory. I just loved how the light looked on this. Um, I really like photographing my home. I think it's really fun. And I thought this was really interesting. The light kind of shines in through the windows early afternoon at my apartment. And I love how the light turned out in this. I think it really emphasizes great sunlight, you know, and you're getting these really nice reflections in the glasses and the individual bottles. And yeah, I just think it turned out really nice. Here's a random photo of a palm tree. Cannot even tell you where it is, to be honest. Um, but again, really kind of harping on the fact that color and light are really important to me as well as symmetry. So I think this is another photo that I took on a walk. Uh, I think it was over in my neighborhood, actually. I think this is like an elementary school or something like that. And what I love about this actually is just this really little patch of light right here. And that's something you'll probably notice, you know, that's kind of characteristically strong in a lot of my photos is I really love kind of interesting shadows and patches of light to work with. And I'll photograph those always. You know, if I see something interesting like that on a walk or, you know, just while I'm going through life, um, I love having examples of really nice light and therefore again i can use this as a reference point down the road i just love to have examples of the kind of light that i like shooting in so that i can you know kind of reference back to that as i move forward and do different shoots down the road here's another photo that actually that i took on the same day as the one before and i love the light right here in the windows i noticed it i was just walking randomly through my neighborhood and there's this really beautiful mid-century house and i loved uh, not only the patches of light right here where you can kind of see um, the trees and you know like the, the different leaves uh, just kind of reflecting onto the to the driveway, but I think really like what struck me was back here. I love that the tree is part of the home, and I love these really interesting lines that seemingly are just going right into the house. It's really beautiful, and overall I just like this photo. I think the light is really interesting, and the color is really interesting, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think something that's also pretty important about this is to expose properly. So I exposed for this back here because I really wanted to make sure that I got that light properly exposed. If I would have exposed for the shadows down here, everything would have been blown out and it honestly wouldn't have looked nearly as interesting to me at least. And that's kind of a creative uh, decision that I had to make right when I was taking this photo. Here's a photo. I think it was in Green Lake in Seattle. Um, I think I was on a walk with my family and that was really nice really pretty colors and I just wanted to kind of take a photo to remember the moment. So fall is obviously really beautiful in Washington and this next photo I think accurately depicts that. Really nice colors and interesting symmetry. I loved like kind of the transition from green to orange to red back to green in terms of the color of the trees and yeah that's that's really mainly why I took this photo. I think it looks nice. Here's a photo I took of Allegra. I think back Maybe about a month and a half ago, we took a trip with a few friends up to Mammoth uh, to go just stay at a cabin in the woods and see some fall colors. And it turned out really nice. This portrait, I really love. I love the shallow depth of field. I think I shot this at F2 and it turned out really nice. I love the uh, fall off uh, from what's in focus to what is not. And I love the swirly bokeh in the background. I think it turned out really nice. Here's another photo from that trip. Uh, this is kind of a classic shot of June Lake Loop in Mammoth and this was again a really beautiful place to go. It's a pretty typical shot that I've seen other people take um, on this road. It's just kind of as you enter into June Lake Loop from the north side of the loop and the colors here are pretty incredible. They're usually always really stunning like this um, but as you can see we got a really nice mix of green, yellow, orange and then the kind of pale blue uh, kind of hue of the mountain in the back looks really nice. It was pretty smoky on this trip from all of this, the fires that were going on. Um, and in my opinion, it kind of gave this like really interesting look to a lot of the photos that I was taking on this trip. But overall, I like the colors of this a lot and the symmetry and the leading lines of the road. I'm a big fan of a nice road shot. And overall, it's a nice picture. Here's another photo I think that was taken the same day. This was also at June Lake. And I really loved the you know, compositional uh, framing of this. Basically you have, you know, this beach back here with some houses on it, but I love this kind of inlet, you know, it's like a little island that had these really beautiful reflecting trees and it had some nice orange leaves towards the bottom, uh, you know, towards the, f like the, the ground on this island. And I just overall loved the colors. I tried to frame it so that you could kind of get a sense of depth so that you could get a sense of how far away, you know, the, 
uh, other side of the lake was from where you were taking this photo. And overall, I like the photo. Uh, compositionally, I think it's, it's really nice. And yeah, the colors just are really great. I love fall. It's a great time of the year to take pictures. This is again from that same lake. Uh, this is more of a shot that was farther back in the forest, shooting towards the lake. And I didn't really care about getting the lake necessarily in this composition. I really was focused on the foliage that was actually, you know, before the actual lake, just because I love the colors. And I thought the greens and the oranges here with the aspen trees turned out really nice. Um, and again, I, I looks like I focused for just this branch right here, actually. Pretty shallow focus from what it looks like. I've had to guess maybe like F4, F5, 6, something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like this photo a lot. This I think would look pretty nice uh, if I printed it. I'm um, looking to get some more prints made for my apartment and for some friends for the holidays. So this might be a great contender for that. Here's a photo just of my friend Zach. Uh, he was there on the trip with us in Mammoth. And I think this photo turned out really nice. A nice portrait of him. I don't love how you can see the lake in his glasses, um, but I just really love the composition and the colors of this. And I like that he's smiling and having a good time. Again, pretty simple, self-explanatory, but again, this is a great uh, time to talk about just how important it is to capture your life, you know, the way that you want to do it. And for me, I found the best way to capture my life is obviously through pictures. Here is one final photo from that trip to Mammoth. Uh, really, really stunning trip. I was so thankful to get up there and shoot some photos with friends and just relax. And I love the kind of symmetry and the leading lines of this image. And I really love the contrast between the kind of bright blue sky and the orange leaves with the sun on it. I just think the colors look really nice on this. And that's a big reason of why I decided to take this photo. And then finally, this is a portrait of my friend Megan. We shot over in, I think it was Laguna Beach a couple months ago. And right after we were done shooting, we actually saw this really nice patch of flowers and I had a couple shots left on my roll of film and I popped off a couple more shots. This one ended up being a really nice image that I was pretty happy with. I love the colors here. And again, the swirly bokeh is really beautiful. I think overall, this photo is really nice. I could have probably composed it slightly better. I could have at least cropped it a little bit more. So you have more of Megan in the frame, less of just like this negative space up here. Um, but overall, I really like the photo and I think it turned out nice. The colors look really nice. All right, so that about concludes today's episode. I think this is something that I'm gonna to continue to do from here on out. It's really nice to be able to just kind of sit down and walk through some photos that I've taken and share with you guys, not only the story behind it, but also you know my thought process behind taking the actual picture. If you guys enjoyed this one, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions or if you guys wanna share some of the photos that you guys have been taking recently, would love to see those as well. Thank you so much as always for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this one and we will see you next week. Take care. Before this video does wrap up, I did want to thank today's sponsor, which is Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. As you guys might know, Squarespace has been a longtime supporter of this YouTube channel, and I can't thank them enough for their continued support of my photography and my filmmaking and my creative endeavors in general. I've been using Squarespace as a customer for just over three years now, and I can't say enough great things about how easy their platform is to use. I've just found it's the best and most simple way to make a great website for me to display my work for clients to see. Now I use my website mainly as a photography portfolio and I've found that the selection of themes really complement the imagery and I find it nice and easy to navigate the different panels and really kind of personalize the website to make it mine. In addition to all this, Squarespace does offer 24-7 customer support for all of your questions and tons of really nice customizable layout and theme options to really make your website stand out. If you guys are interested in checking out Squarespace for yourself, go to squarespace.com slash Samuel Elkins, which is in the description, to get 10% off your first website or domain purchase. Thank you so much as always for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next week. Peace.